Welcome everybody to another episode of the Nonprofit Show. You know, Fridays are our favorite day here on the Nonprofit Show because it's Ask and Answer. It's not because it's the end of the week. It's because it's Ask and Answer. And every Friday, we get a different, I like to call them super brain from Fundraising <laughs> Academy at National University to come in and chat with us um, about questions that come to us. And Tony, you know, it's really an interesting thing because these questions come to us um, in person, people email, um, they might, you know, write in during another broadcast. Um, I was at an event last night where somebody stopped me and said, hey, can you add this question in? You know, it, it's a very interesting thing. And so questions come to us from all places. And uh, it's just a fascinating thing to have these discussions. We don't always agree on the answers. Sometimes um, our Fundraising Academy folks bring up things that I had never thought of or Jarrett had never thought of and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So it's really fun. Today we have Tony Bell, Senior Director for the Center of Development and Advancement at National University, coming to us from his glorious Florida room in Florida. And we are so thrilled you're here, Tony. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. And again, always a pleasure to be here. I love these conversations. And the questions are always interesting. Yeah. And, and I think part of the reason why uh, they're interesting is that you created a really safe place for folks to be able to engage and ask the questions that are top of mind for them. So so thank you for that and, and the contributions that you and, and this show continue to make uh, to the nonprofit sector. Well, thank you. You made my day. You know, um, I do take off names sometimes <laughs> um, and and cities because if if their name is really unusual or it's like a, a question that you could track it back, I think um, sometimes that's just the better thing to do. For so sure. we don't always disclose <laughs> who people are. And sometimes people don't disclose too, right? I mean, you know, so. I'm yeah, yeah. Well, the, the, the name withheld are always the most interesting. I know. They're my favorite. I live for the name withheld. I really do. Well, again, I'm with Tony Bell, um, Julia Patrick, uh, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. We have amazing partners, and that starts with Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Staffing Boutique, Your Part-Time Controller, 180 Management, Fundraising Academy at National University, where Tony Bell comes to us from, JMT Consulting, Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. Tony, we just passed like our 957th episode, I think, this week, marching towards a thousand episodes. So pretty crazy, huh? Pretty crazy. And a lot of those sponsors have been with you throughout this yeah. entire journey, which is just yeah. wonderful. And, and their commitment yeah. to professional development in the space is just is really worth applauding. Yeah, thank you. It really is. And and uh it it's it's very exciting and sometimes it's like shocking that you know, three years have gone by. Oh, no, I know. <laughs> I'm like, we what the heck? <laughs> and, you know, if you want to see any of our three years of, of content, you can download the app, find us on streaming and podcasts. Um, we'll come to you any way you need us to get to you 24-7. Uh, so let's start with Lois from Denver, Colorado. I bet it's cold there today. Ooh, I bet. Ooh, Lois. Probably right sunny. <laughs> yeah, true, true, true. <laughs> Lois writes in, it's the new year, and I'm wondering if I should spend more time on developing my board or working, developing my C-suite leadership team. I only have so much time to dedicate to either group. I think this is like a fascinating question. And um, I, I'll tell you, I met with a, a, an interim CEO who was in Phoenix, my hometown, uh, last night. He's from uh, another state. And I asked him what was his like most shocking part about working as an interim and what does he learn? And he said that not enough American nonprofits work with developing their boards. So it's mm -hmm. crazy that this question would be would like land on our deck today. Yeah. Um, so I'm fascinated by what you think. So so all of us, uh, I'm going to make the assumption, are dealing with bandwidth issues. So it is, you know, so I, that's the first thing I thought of, right, is, is we're all kind of dealing with bandwidth issues. I'm sure that uh, 
you know, this Lois would prefer to have time for both because there's value in developing both, right? right. So, we, so then, you know, it's the bandwidth issue. It's the intentionality around, you know, being very intentional and in where you're putting your time and, and your effort. The first thing I think about when I look at this is where is going to be the greatest return on effort for the community you serve? Mm -hmm. So is the greatest return on effort going to be developing your board mm -hmm. and working with them? Is that going to have the greatest impact on your mission and, and again, your impact in the communities that you serve, or is it going to be your C-suite leadership team? Is yeah. that going to have the greatest impact on your mission and the communities that you serve? So I would ask myself that question first. Mm -hmm. yeah, Putting in cool. the resources the, and, and all of that, where is, where is my effort going to bring me the greatest return? Yeah. Now, if, if, if you do your list and, and they're even, you're like, oh, my gosh, well, you know, the board's <laughs> going to bring this and, and the C-suite's <laughs> going to bring this. Uh, then I'm going to make the assumption that uh, you are going to you're going to see a, a larger return on your effort with your C-suite leadership team. And the reason why I say that is because they are the ones that are ultimately responsible for the day to day deliverables of the organization. <laughs> And the stronger your C-suite is, uh, the stronger your impact is going to be, again, in, in the communities that you serve. So that's kind of, you know, um, where, where are you going to get your, your greatest effort? If it's kind of a tie, then my experience would, would recommend that you lean into your C-suite leadership team. And if your budget allows, bring someone in to work with the board so that you don't have to spend your time on the board development work. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of incredible asynchronous mm -hmm. training out there for board. I mean, mm -hmm. just lots of great, I mean, for C-suite as well, but particularly for the board, there's mm -hmm. a lot of great asynchronous learning out there mm -hmm. that you can engage them in. And then at a board meeting, have them talk about their shared learning. Mm -hmm. Okay. So get up, you know how I love baseball, get up your uh, catcher's mitt and or your bat, but I love the bunt. Um <laughs> Yeah, the but it scares the hell out of me, but it's a cool thing. Okay, <laughs> what do you think about this idea? If you're, and I'm assuming that that Lois is a CEO. Mm, yeah, I did. If too. you go to both groups and you say, "Hey, kids, I've only got so much gas in the engine, and I've identified these two main groups that need support and need help. What do you think is more important?" I mean, I think it would be an interesting question because well, we, I, mean, know, I, I don't know what your what your thoughts are, but no, well, I, th I think that those types of, of questions uh, spark not not only do they educate you right on on where you're on where you're going right, but they also ha can help create buy in. Okay. So you know, so you know, okay. maybe maybe there are board members that don't really feel like they need it, but then when you ask the questions and other ans others answer, then we're like, you know, it, that wouldn't be a bad idea for the board to engage in that type of of professional learning. Mm -hmm. uh, but what what I thought you were going to say, Julia, actually, and and as you were asking that question, is maybe there's an opportunity depending on what the needs are of the C suite. Maybe there are board members that have those skill sets that can invest some of their time in supporting some of the C-suite in those mm -hmm. professional development or, or individual growth areas. So, uh, wow. so I, I guess the main thing is, you know, stay creative in your yeah. approach, yeah. Uh, but really look at where are you going to get the big, the biggest return on effort. Okay, I'm going to woman up and say, I wish I had thought of that. <laughs> I, I didn't, but you're right. Hello. That's what we're supposed to be doing with our boards. We're supposed to be looking out and saying, what are your treasures and your talents that you can bring to us with your time and help us build a stronger organization? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, so you're right. I think that 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 should have been something that uh, that I thought of, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, let's see how if I if I do better with this uh, question, because, you know, I was thinking when this came through my office, I don't know if we've ever had, maybe we've had like one, but a question from Canada. So this is cool because oh, that's very we cool. Have, yeah, we have guests from and viewers from Canada. We know this, but um, yeah, so name withheld. We took their name off. 
I've been asked to serve on a board of another nonprofit that does similar work to the one I actually work for. I'm a professional and know a lot about the sector with which I work in. Would this be a conflict of interest? Super interesting question. Yeah, so I am all about collaboration, collective impact, partnerships. Mm -hmm. uh, I I don't know that I would, well, one, let's congratulate Name Withheld that they would even consider serving on a board. Yeah, Considering, right. I'm sure, all of the other work that, that they yeah. have, you know, that they're doing, you know, great mm -hmm. work in the sector. Uh, I I would consider this a conflict of, of interest. Yeah, uh, I think that there are plenty of ways for the organization uh, that wants this individual to serve on the board, there are plenty of ways for them to engage with this professional at their existing organization mm -hmm. in terms of collaboration or collective impact initiatives yeah. um, that will help them grow as well. So there was a scenario many years ago here in South Florida where four uh, small nonprofit organizations came together and did a, a fundraising event that benefited all four of the agencies. Mm -hmm. And what was really great about that was the shared learning that took place across mm -hmm. those agencies. Some yes. were really strong in marketing. Others were really strong in event planning. Mm -hmm. Others were strong in, you know, so they learned so much from one another, brought their top skills in uh, mm -hmm. and had a very successful event shared, you know, shared, literally shared the wealth, but yeah. also shared the wealth of knowledge that each of them brought mm -hmm. to the table. So, uh, so I do think it's a conflict of interest, uh, but I think there are, there are creative ways for these organizations to collaborate uh, to where they really are lifting each other up. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I, I, I would, that's exactly my first reaction was like, no, that's just, and even if it isn't, it can lead to the perception of a conflict, which then creates a whole nother level of, you know, <laughs> drama <laughs> for everyone. Yeah. But I, I love your idea of the, the collaboration. And, you know, maybe you start with um, joint tours of each other's mm -hmm. projects, you know, that love tour it. in a box that Terry Axelrod always promoted, where you can go to somebody's you know, board meeting and give a, a, you know, rundown on what you do or bring them to your campus if you have one. I mean, there, there are ways that we can share knowledge um, and maybe that's what it's about versus bringing somebody in because there, it, there, there's some proprietary stuff that goes on in our nonprofit sector. And it, I just think it's not a healthy thing. And, and in this kind of scenario, you know, a fun activity for a board would be to do like a scavenger hunt on the other organization's website. Oh, so love that. You know, so something like that where the board members go to, you know, they're they're asked to find certain things on the other organization's mm -hmm. website and they they go there and they learn about the organization and and the similarities and mm -hmm. and you know and and a lot of times that kind of exercise a board member would say, well, they're not doing this but but we're doing, you know, we're serving the mm -hmm. same community. They're mm -hmm. they're not doing something that we're doing and we can fill a gap in you know, in their efforts. So that's a I'm fun gonna, activity. I'm going to completely borrow that. I was going to say rip off, but I won't say that. Um, I love that idea. I think that's just genius. And it it does a lot of things. It gets those board members re-engaged in a way that that maybe they wouldn't have just automatically done. So name mm -hmm. withheld in Toronto. Um, I don't know what it is, maybe because it's cold out there for me, but I'm like, oh, it's going to be cold in Toronto. <laughs> so I hope this question warmed you up. Because, Toronto is such a great city. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. Well, now, isn't Toronto going to be the, next, the, the site of the next AFP icon? That is correct. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, that's a, that's a big deal. Okay, let's go to Mario and... Mm -hmm. Mario, um, we took the city off and it says, we have a board member who's quite elderly and having a challenge with our board portal. This is a digital comfort zone issue. I I, that's gentle. That's gentle and kind. A digital comfort zone issue. I love it. Should we ask this board member to move on and search for a more modern tech savvy person? We're, I'm hearing this a lot. 
I, I mean, yeah, this one gave me this one gives me a lot of different feelings to be <laughs> to be honest with you. Uh, I think in in the spirit of diversity, equity, and inclusion, mm -hmm. there are some inclusion conversations to be had here mm -hmm. uh, around this particular. Now, again, we try to answer these just based on the question, and we yeah. know that there are yeah. variables, and that you know it's yeah. deep, right? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. just based on the question, you know, this is <laughs> how I'm responding. Uh, <laughs> is that you know, I mean regardless of age, quite elderly, not elderly, what is the value that this mem board member is bringing to the organization? If this board member is, is bringing value to the organization, we don't move them on because they have a digital comfort zone or because we've decided that some portal mm -hmm. is going to make our life easier <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> in terms of, of running the organization. So, you know, so... Uh, I don't know. I think I am kind of narrowing down some of my feelings about it. So uh, it it honestly aggravates me a little bit the the thought that a valued contributing board member would be removed from a board because of their digital comfort zone. Yeah, you know, my first reaction to this was um, I thought that the way this question was posed that this organization doesn't have an emeritus board. And emeritus mm -hmm. is Latin for old soldier. And right. it is a really important structure, I think, to move people on so that you don't lose their champion, you know, behavior, that you keep that institutional knowledge. You have a resource for wisdom that can help that's if you need a step back. You know, mm -hmm. maybe that 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 voice, those voices can help. But mm -hmm. just to move somebody off like that, and maybe I'm showing my age, but you know, I'm I'm probably, you know, in my 30s, I'd be like, hell yeah, get them off. We got things to do. And now in my 60s, I'm like, let's have some compassion. Well, well, you you and I, you and I in our 30s would be like, they can't use the fax machine. We gotta get yes. rid of them. So it's all different. You know, a whole different ballgame now, right? But that's uh, right. They're but, like, you they turned the paper around the wrong way when they were faxing. Do you remember that? Oh yes. But but to your point, I mean, if if you're going to move the board member on, then you're moving them on either because of poor performance yeah. or because they've reached their term limit. Yeah. For the you know for the organization, mm -hmm. you're not going to move someone on because of their age or because of their digital comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I that's, agree. And that's my opinion. No, and I think that also too, um, you know, I think that um, it's not just an age thing um, with, you know, the digital world that we're navigating through. I think it's also an educational thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how, how much time have you invested and supported that board member in that portal um, journey. You know, if, if you're working in a, a business environment where you're using a portal system, it might be Slack or Basecamp or even sure. just like the Google environment, you kind of have a, a built-in ability to understand how some of these structures work, even though you might be in a new portal. But, you know, you kind of get it. If you're talking to somebody who never worked in that environment, you've got to give them some grace and some education, I think. To, to I help. totally agree with you. Absolutely. So, and but that's where we're going. Board oh, yeah. portals are they're not I mean they're just picking up speed. They're more, oh, more for product. sure. I I served on a board not too long ago that had a board portal. Yeah. Uh and and I could easily navigate it and I thought it was great. It cut down on emails, everything was in one place. I mean I I certainly see the benefit and and support the use of of the technology. Uh Yeah. Yeah. It's it's really really important. Okay, well let's go to K in oh. Chicago, Illinois. Of course, again, what am I going to say? I bet it's freezing there. <laughs> it's cold. Okay. How important is it to start all staff meetings with a mission moment? We have a large staff of 250 plus team members and they travel in for the all hands meeting. The mission moment takes up valuable time. As you might see, we're trying to cut our meeting time down. Interesting question. Well, I love that they that they have a mission moment. I think there's value in a mission moment. 
I think there's value in sharing with our peers uh, the success stories that are taking place in our, I'm going to assume maybe there's chapters here or something, right? Uh, oh, or, yeah. in our re- or in our regions. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. So I think there's there's a lot of value in that time investment in these mission moments. I think when you're looking at a large audience of 250 plus team members, that you do have to get really creative about the ways in which you do that. Yeah. Um, so maybe it's, you know, maybe there's one mission moment per region. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, so maybe, you know, maybe that's mm-hmm. the way that it's done. Uh, is there, if they're all coming together, is there anything that happens before, you know, the actual convening where mission moments can be shared electronically or on a portal or an event platform? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, and maybe, you know, maybe, you, maybe there's uh, something on a platform where everybody submits their mission moment. And folks go in and, and like vote on their favorite. And then at the national convening, the top three mission moments are shared. Doesn't mean that every mission moment isn't valuable and important, right. you know, but it's just a way of, again, in addressing this question, mm-hmm. a way of kind of cutting it down. Mm-hmm. The other thing that I thought about, uh, and uh, a friend of mine recently posted using this was a uh, Slido. So I don't know if you've ever used the Slido uh, platform, but it allows you to create word clouds. So oh, they, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So they, could, they could do that live at the meeting and have everyone pull up Slido and say, when you okay. think about your mission moment, what is the one word that comes to mind? And see all of the different words that pop oh, up oh. based mm-hmm. on everyone's thoughts about their mission moment. Mm-hmm. Then if there's one that really stands out, let's just say maybe just happy. <laughs> you know, then then whoever's facilitating could say, how many people said happy? And everyone could raise their mm-hmm. hand and you could choose one and say, what was your mission moment that mm-hmm. made you happy? And allow folks to kind of share out that way. So I think mm-hmm. there are ways to do it and get really creative. And um, but I do think it's I do think there's value in mission moments. Mm-hmm. Um it, you know, it, it tends to really uplift the team uh, when, when we're sharing these success stories. Well, and I think to your point, it's um, it, it's a good starting point. You know, it's a good way to kind of get everybody refocused and say, OK, why are we here? What are we doing? It's It's like what we said, if you joined us in the green room earlier, you know, what's your word for the year? Maybe not what's your overarching, like what are your goals and your resolutions, but what's your word? What's your tone that you're going to take? And so I think the mission moment for me, Tony, is pretty holy because I think in in board service, most people, you're like Julia Patrick, you're racing to get to the meeting, you know, because Mm -hmm. you've had a long day and you're trying to do everything you can, but yet be present. And it kind of sometimes for me has always served as that like, okay, put on the crown of leadership. This is a tough topic, right? Mm -hmm. And it just kind of centers you down. So Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think that, I think it don't cut it, but I love what you said. Think of it as a different avenue for, for building um, a better experience. I think Mm -hmm. that's that Slido. Yay team. Well, and what you said is important, Julia. Don't cut it. Yeah. Yeah, because it it really is time well invested in your agenda. Yeah. Okay, well, let's um, really go quickly. I could talk to you forever, but we have one more question. Yeah, I'm Um, kind of chatty today. (laughs) I know, it's good. It's a good thing. Um, Okay, name withheld, and I'm going to man up and say, this came to me at an event. I'm a CEO who has served in my current position for three years. I have not been able to get a job review, and I am concerned that the board chair keeps passing along on this. Who is responsible for this important task, and what is the standard practice? Um, I'll witness to you, it wasn't even as much about money. No. It was about performance review, which broke my heart. I mean, no, if it was no, about money, that's one thing, but. Mm-hmm. And, and I think in most cases, it is more about the review yeah. and, and more about the, the affirmation uh, mm-hmm. that we are performing in, in our roles and meeting the expectations mm-hmm. uh, of our board. Uh, and, and 
to what degree are we meeting those expectations? Am I doing just exactly what's on the job description? One, do I have a job description? Yeah. I mean, again, a whole different show, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, 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 and to what degree am I, am I, you know, fulfilling the expectations of, of the job description? Mm -hmm. A lot of us in the nonprofit sector are very proud about the work that we do and very proud to serve in the way that we serve. And these reviews from our board, again, are really important um, affirmations or touch points, if you will, about how our work is being perceived. Uh, the responsibility, I think, falls on the entire board, not just the board chair. Okay. Often, the bo often the board chair is responsible for delivering, delivering. Okay. the review, but the actual process and assurance mm -hmm. that a review takes place is the full board's responsibility, okay. not just the board chair. Uh, what, what name might held might consider doing, and there are plenty of templates out there, uh, and name withheld can feel free to reach out to me. I, I have templates as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe the, the approach is to do a self-assessment and submit that to the board chair. Oh, I love that approach because that's going to start the conversation. It's going to start it's the conversation. Show intention. I love that idea. And, and, and most... You know, wow. and, and the best practice in most organizations now really is a self-assessment mm -hmm. before the leader or the board, you know, gives their assessment. Mm -hmm. uh, I I was doing self-assessments back with American Express, you know, in the 90s. So, you know, so they were early adapters of, of mm -hmm. the concept. Uh, but mm -hmm. yeah, so so think about think about the self-review and and submitting that to the board chair or the entire board. Because uh, I do feel like it's you know, it's an entire board responsibility to ensure that this takes place. Yeah, I I think that's very wise, and I think it's also probably just we get so bogged down with our tasks and what we have to do, and then to have that moment of reflection um, could really be enlightening for our own self and our own leadership style. So I love that, and thank you. That that's a brilliant answer. Well, of course. Always brilliant. Tony Bell, Senior Director, Center for Development Advance and Advancement at National University. You know, it is a real pleasure to have you with us. I know that you are an incredibly busy man, um, and I know that, that you carve out time to do this with us. So I am very, very grateful because uh, your knowledge is is just a, is an amazing thing, and uh, we are very grateful to have you. Um, so thank you, Tony Bell. You oh, are you're so you're kind. Crazy. No, you're, you're so I'm not kind. kind. Thank you. I'm just speaking <laughs> the truth, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you so much. It, it's always an honor. And I, you know, I love the Fundraising Academy team and, and I love being a, a part of, of National University and, uh, you know, and, and none of us are, are the, the architects of, of this great curriculum, but we're all super ambassadors of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and to be able to collaborate with you in the nonprofit show really is just a joy for all of us. Well, thank you. You know, I, I think it is interesting with um, the team that's so diverse and sprinkled throughout the country and sometimes the world. Um, everybody has their own approach, or not approach, but maybe temperament to mm -hmm. this great structure. And so what what you all have taught me is that you know you can still be your authentic self and have your own personality and your own viewpoints. But if you have a good structure, then that's that's where the magic happens, right? Mm -hmm. And and mm -hmm. so I think that that's some one of the things that we learn with everybody from Fundraising Academy that comes on. So, um, but we're thrilled, obviously, to have you. Again, we're also thrilled to have the support of these amazing, amazing sponsors. And again, again uh, Friday Ask and Answer comes to us with a partnership from Fundraising Academy at National University. And our partners also include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Staffing Boutique, Your Part-Time Controller, uh, 180 Management Group, JMT Consulting, Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. Hey, my friend, I hope that you get to have a restful weekend, and I hope that you come out on the other side on Monday with that magical word for the new year. Well, I'll be sure to share it with you. So, uh, so thank you for the encouragement, and uh, wishing, wishing you and just everyone that 
that supports and listens to the nonprofit show. Just mm -hmm. the most exceptional new year. Thank you, Tony. I do appreciate that. Hey, everybody, as we end every episode of the nonprofit show, we like to remind ourselves and you to stay well so you can do well. We'll see you back here soon. Thank you, my friend. Thank you.